Good morning. Today's scripture comes from the last book of the Bible, the last chapter, the last book, almost at the very end, Revelation chapter 21, uh, verses 1 through 6. So, y'all know the drill. I'd invite you to pause now, read that, uh, Revelation 21, 1 to 6, then come on back with me for the sermon. How will it end? How does the story of this life end? How does the story of this world end? These are questions we often ask ourselves and our friends about that book <laughs> that we're reading together or about that show or that movie that we're watching. How will it end? We see where things stand. We have a sense of how things are going and it makes us deeply curious about how it will end. One of my best friends growing up was uh, Tom William Buckberry, brilliant guy. Um, and he had this uncanny ability to see how things were going to end, uh, whether it was in books or shows or relationships. <laughs> so uh, he's this walking, talking spoiler alert, which makes watching movies difficult with him. He'll watch for a little while and then he'll tell you how it's going to unfold step by step and how it's going to end. And usually, He's right. <laughs> so in the spirit of Tom William Buckberry, spoiler alert. Um, you've just read what happens at the end of the Bible. Revelation 21 is the end. If you haven't read that chapter or that book or seen the previous episodes, I should have given you a spoiler alert before. That's the end. For some folks, the ending of the Bible is rather unexpected. You know, there's not some big dramatic conclusion. Jesus doesn't come back at the last minute. The devil doesn't have the last word. God doesn't destroy us all. In fact, the opposite of destruction happens. There's a new heaven and a new earth. And where is it? It's right here. According to Revelation 21, the new heaven and the new earth is right here. Verse 2 says it comes down out of the clouds. And verse 3 says God comes here to live with us. Now the vision at the end of the Bible is God reuniting with the whole creation. Uh, not in some distant universe, but here among us. The Bible begins with God creating us and the Bible ends with God joining us. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away, says verse 4. Now to be clear, there is a verse right after today's reading in verse 8, um, which says that some will be judged unable to join the new heaven and the new earth. At the same time, it says God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and only God gets to make those judgments about who's in. So back to our question. How does it all end? How does our story end? Revelation says it ends with a new heaven and a new earth. Right here. God among us. Creator and creation united like never before. It's a happy ending. A hopeful ending. A reason to celebrate. When you know how a story ends, doesn't it change the way you experience what comes in the middle? If you know the main character is going to die, doesn't it make the life experiences in between seem a little bit more tragic or meaningful? We know how our story ends. A new heaven and a new earth where the creation is united with the creator like never before. Doesn't that give you hope? Hope to the way you experience every little thing that happens in between? Today's All Saints Day. And on All Saints Day, um, it makes us think about all the fine women and men who've given us glimpses of that hope over the years. Our better angels who have lived among us and who are now in that new heaven, who we hope to see on that new earth one fine day. So in worship today, we're going to say their names out loud. I would invite you here as we're worshiping online. Name your saints. 
name your saints. Say the names of the people who've gone on to be with God, who will remain in your heart, not just this day, but forevermore. Say their names. And now let us go to God for a word of prayer on this All Saints Day. O oh God, you are making all things new, a new heaven, a new earth, a new way of thinking, a new way of being. You're making all things new. No more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more pain. You're making all things new. Renew our minds to renew the world by living out your commandment of love. You're making all things new. We thank you for the saints, those dear souls who've shown us glimpses of your goodness. May they live on not only in our memories, but also in our actions as we honor them with our example until that fine day when we meet again in the new heaven and the new earth. You are making all things new, O oh God, and we are grateful. Amen. And amen.